In this video, you're going to learn how to give your mix bus a lift using Waves Studio Rack, adding excitement, weight, energy, width, sheen, and more depth. In my mix technique, I'm using these plugins, but I'll show you how to build it from scratch using your favorite plugins from Waves. Later, I'll share my secret for building and testing complex chains so that you can predict what they will sound like and easily head off any problems. My name is Daniel Jason Booth and I teach mixing, recording and other music production related topics. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. So I guess my question for you guys is what are you using to add lift to your mix bus? Leave a comment down below and uh, let me know what some of your favourite plugins are. So as you would have heard just from that short snippet there, things sound much better with it turned up and it's meant to get a little bit louder both on the meters and also perceptually louder. It's a little bit like using Tabasco sauce on everything and that's all you're gonna taste. So, you know, restrain yourself. Here's how it works. Here we are in Pro Tools. This is my version of the lift bus. It's obviously made up of a macro here. Let's go into what this is all about. But first, I just want to strip it back to nothing and just explain how we got to where we are. Obviously, this is the macro section. Here, you can put in plugins, much like you can over here on these inserts. I'm just going to start out by putting a parallel split. And basically, what you do is you have two versions of the mix. You have this version, which is think of this like your mix bus, and then think of this like your inverted version of the mix bus. Okay, we add a macro, we assign it to macro one. We're also going to assign that to macro one. We basically want to keep that off until we start turning this up. And in order to do that, we just need to drag this across. I want to just set it to zero so that it goes up to unity. That looks right to me. And now, as soon as you start opening that up, you can see that this rack turns on. I've inverted the polarity because of what we're going to do next. This is how we get the gradual progression of the lift plugins that we're using on the mix bus. If I just play this mix, you'll hear basically what it's doing. So this dial is essentially lifting up this parallel path, which is an inverted version of the mix. The reason is, is that we're more or less creating another mix bus here, of which we are going to assign the rack to macro one. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to, we're going to have it switch on as soon as we activate it. We're also going to do the same here. Okay, so we need to go in and edit that. So we want it to max out at zero. We'll leave that at infinity and now that should put both of those up so what we're doing is once we have that all the way up this might as well not be there because this is cancelling itself out and what we're left with is this new mix bus essentially if you think of it like this it's like adding a bunch of processing to the mix bus but being able to do it progressively let me just switch that one back on you might have guessed it by now what we need to do next is we need to add some plugins so i'm just going to add uh let me just go tg mastering you get your settings okay and you build your chain of plugins that you want to lift the mix so you just keep going keep adding whatever processing you want to put in there if you're going to build this yourself just use whatever plugins you think you need to put in there the one thing that i want you to be careful of is it is possible to put a multi-band split when i showed you my version you would have seen a multi-band split across it let's go back to that it all looks the same look all looks pretty much the same so we've got these two faders they still go up so at this inverted version of the mix but we've got this multi-band split and that's because we've got trans x wide on the bottom frequencies everything below 500 we've got the pig child in the middle on one particular setting so that's left right and that's lat vert two different settings the reason why you want to have this multi-band split across these is because if you don't let me just show you what that sounds like If 
You can hear there we're getting a lot of weird kind of cancelling happening in that what must be probably around this 2K crossover region that we've got in that multi-band split. So we have to do it across each of the different versions and that's exactly what I've done. So here's what I've got going on. I've got the Puig Tech, so I've got a low end boost at 100 and also a cut. And then I've got fairly broad boost happening at 16K of about 6.2 attenuation happening at 20K. Pretty much like a, a smiley face EQ. And then we've got a little bit of compression going on. Uh, you can see I've dialed the input way down I've dialed the output way up to make up for that and low ratio. And then I've got a little bit more tone shaping using the uh, Q3, so very light. And then I've got some of the lower level compression happening on the MV2 plugin. A little goes a long way. I've also noticed that when you lift this, it tends to bring out a lot more of the details, so it can make it even brighter still. And it's not brighter in the sense of the tone, it's more the fact that it brings the transients out more. Which brings us to this multiband split. In the lower frequencies, I've got transx and it's making the low end a bit punchy. Then I've got the Puig Child in the left right compression settings, uh, exactly the same for both sides. The reason I've chosen left right is so that they compress differently on both sides reacting to the program material that's being put through them. You get a bit more separation and a bit more differences happening on the left and the right sides, but this is obviously focused in this 500 to 2K region and that's what I've done it for so that it more or less spreads this mid-range out and then for the top frequencies I've got latvert mode. Latvert is a form of mid side processing so the mid pretty much stays as it is and then I'm driving the input gain to get some harmonic content out of this. It's really grabbing a hold of it it's actually really compressing it quite hard and I've got a slight boost on the sides. Anything above 2k is actually being expanded outwardly. Essentially a stereo widener is another way of looking at it. I haven't done it across the entire mix, I've just made it so that it's just pertaining to 2K and up, okay? So that's the multiband split and then I've got L3 which is not doing a lot. So I've turned off the dither and I've only pretty much just used this to drop it down. Now while we're on the limiter let me just expand this uh, GUI. I'll make this a bit bigger. I've actually assigned a macro to this. You can see I've got this one. It does nothing if the lift is not turned on. If the lift is turned on, then you're actually going to start pulling down that threshold. And I've limited to negative four because if you're a bit of a cowboy and you decided to really crank it by pulling down that threshold, it would get very loud very quickly. So what I've done is I've limited that range from zero to negative four, which you can see here. Just a matter of right clicking on the threshold and assigning it to macro two. I'm named it appropriately, which is limiter threshold. The last thing that I did, which was to have all of these crossovers be exactly the same. So you can get the other one out. All of these crossovers talk to each other and that is so that we maintain phase coherency. So if I say pump that up to three, one, four five the one that we've got our processing on that is reflected there as well so how did i come about these settings well you must use your ears the idea behind everything that i'm doing here is that everything needs to be subtle now this doesn't look subtle but in actual fact the processing that this does these are more or less corrections for some of the idiosyncrasies of this particular eq but i like this eq because it uh has a bit of mojo you know, a bit of harmonic content that it's adding to the signal. Whilst I'm creating these plugin chains, I like to save different copies of them. I'll go up to here and I'll do a, a like a Pro Tools preset save just to have that as a backup. And I'll also do a, you know, save it to a new file and then I'll also save it to lift. These presets are actually available when you use the VST versions. So for this uh, next step to work, which is really kind of the designing and testing step to ensure that you actually get something predictable and you don't have to spend hours and hours trying stuff out. I highly recommend that you purchase a plugin from DDMF. It's called Plugin Doctor. Let me just fire that one up. So if you're a bit of a nerd 
Plugin Doctor is great. If you're working in Pro Tools, go back to the Waves installers and reinstall the VST versions. So once you've got all your VST plugins installed, you can come into here and you can look at all the different plugins that you've got VST versions of. I'm just going to come in and grab one of the Waves one because, you know, that's what we're working with. Let's see what the CLA76 does. What you can do is you set the test signal level. So if, if I raise the test signal level, it's going to obviously push harder into it. This first tab is checking the linearity of the plugin. Think of it more like tone. So in terms of tone, let me flick over to the Bluey. So the Bluey has a bit of a subtle low end boost and then it's got quite a steep roll off starting at five. That's just the natural character of the compressor. When we get into EQs, actually let me go and grab an EQ. So we go back to our menu here. Let's actually go in and grab a Puig Tech. This is the curve. So if we were to get a rough volume match with the original signal, we'd have to drop the output by about that amount, I would say, something that lines up with the Unity gain level. Uh, this is actually a great way of teaching gain staging because if I do a massive boost on the low end, you can see that the entire level jumps considerably. So we'd have to have something you know, in that region to kind of compensate for the massive boost that we just did. But it's great because you can see all the different things that happen inside the plugins. If you don't know what something's doing, you can come in and investigate. How cool is that? If we were to go over to the harmonic analysis tab, bring up the plugin again, you can see all the harmonics that it's adding. We can actually see that we've got a bit of fold down distortion here, somewhere around negative 30. It's probably not that audible, really. Even when it's switched off, the plugin still has harmonics running through it. There you go. What if we decided that we wanted to try out the noise? Well, look at that. We've got a whole bunch of noise that's now masking a lot of that. So maybe there is actually something to this. Maybe it's actually doing some good because it's getting rid of some of this distortion here. You know, it might actually be a good thing. That's the harmonics analysis. And then we've got this one, which gives us, it's got a guide here. So that's the fundamental frequency. And if we go to uh, the second harmonic that's shown in red, so that's at that level relative to the fundamental and same with the third harmonic, so on and so forth. The dynamic section is actually good for compressors. So let me grab the uh, CLA. This is our unity gain level and this is testing for 20 Hertz. So we want to maybe let's bump it up to an, a normal test signal a thousand. Let's bring back the GUI window. Let's gain level match the output. So let's drop that down until we get a match. If we were to run something through this right now, as soon as the audio got to this level here, so it's between negative 12 and negative 25, it will start to drop the level by that amount. Okay, what if we go all buttons in? Okay, that's quite brutal, isn't it? 20 to one, the threshold is actually sitting a bit higher. And you can see that as we go down, the threshold gets lower. You can also load up, uh, for example, if we wanted to load up the blue version of this, let's do that. So we double click that. So now we've got two versions. Let's, uh, so that's that one. Let's drop the output. Let's match these two. What if we decided to really push the signal in and drop the output? Okay, very different character. So let's flick over to the bluey on this one and you can see uh, if we, we can level match the two signals until we get to the compress level. So what this is doing is it's feeding in a low level signal all the way up to the high level signal. And the great thing is that, is that we don't actually have to hear it. But if we compare, say, four to one ratio on both of these, the bluey threshold is actually lower. We would obviously interpret that as compressing it harder, making the signal quieter. But we can see that there's a difference there. You've got two slots there. You can compare two different plugins. The way that I use it, let's now load up the file for the preset. And so that's my preset. You'll see here as I turn up the lift. I know it's a lot smaller now, but as I turn up the lift, what happens? from a tonal point of view. It's not what I would have expected, but it's great to know what's going on under the hood. Okay, the other thing I haven't spoken about actually is that we've also got this other useful one here, which is the phase. 
Now, if we remember, if we go and have a look at our crossovers for these multi-band splits, 500 and 2K, they don't actually end up at those frequencies. We're actually getting different points to what the crossovers are. Not a big deal. It's good to know. And you'll see what happens if we turn these off and then start to use. Look at that. That's what's giving us that weird kind of hole in the sound. What is it doing frequency wise? Yeah, look at that. Okay, so frequency wise, when we don't use those, you know, it just wreaks havoc on the sound. You've got to duplicate across these, otherwise you'll just destroy your sound. Think of that as an EQ on your mix. That's not going to sound good. Okay, that's really it. And in terms of how to come up with these things, play around with my settings if you have the same plugins as me. If you want to get a bit more adventurous, you want to change some stuff, here's what I would advise. I would use the linear analysis window to more or less look at the tone. I would check the phase just to see what is actually going on. It's kind of unavoidable if you've got crossover filters not to have this thing happening. You know, it happens with multiband compressors unless they're linear multiband. If I take out, say, all of this stuff, let's go back to the uh, Puig Tech. That's all that we're getting with that Puig Tech setting. Pretty gentle, even though it looks like we're boosting a lot. All we're getting is a bit of attenuation here, half a dB and plus two at, uh, what is that, 15,000 hertz. A bit of a drop off there. I just came in and I played with these settings until I found something that was relatively smooth and flat. So you can go back, save it to the preset file, go back into Pro Tools, have a listen, fiddle about, do what you can to get it to where you need it to be. I quite like using the dynamic section so you can see it's doing a tiny bit of compression. It's barely compressing. We'll see it compress just a little bit. Okay, and then we've got our Q3. Let me have a look at that. So we've got that in there. It's doing a little bit of tone shaping there and that will probably be for correcting what comes later on. Phase-wise, pretty okay. Not too crazy until we put those multi-bands back in there. What about the MV2? Well, the MV2 is a compressor. We see we get a bit of a drop in level. You can see now how that level has changed. So the yellow line is where we would say Unity is. And what we're doing, we can see, is we've raised the gain in the lower level stuff, uh, we've got a bit of that uh, CLA compression happening with the 1176. Okay, so that's the two combined. So a bit of upward compression and a bit of downward compression. You know, all pretty subtle stuff. Let's go back to the multiband split. So we had TransX, we had the Puig Child. It's not really about compressing stuff, although the top end is being compressed. You can run a higher signal through that. Harmonically, so I didn't use any of the noise in there. Okay, that's the harmonic analysis. And then the limiter, how does that, does that change the tone, I wonder? No, no effect on the tone. And in terms of the final output level, I've tried to match it up here. That's our sweet spot for uncompressed, our sweet spot for lifting things up. And this is the compression zone. You can also go over to here and we can see how the signal changes over time. So we've got one second of negative 20 dB signal being thrown in there. And then we get two seconds of zero dB. I'm guessing that's full scale. Then we've got one second of negative 20 dB. So we've got a baseline signal, a louder signal to see what the slope of the attack is. Here we can see what the release is. So it's quite a gentle, slow release, adding quite a lot of attack at this frequency. So 2.6. You can take it down to something a bit lower, getting quite a big attack there. You build it, you test it. If you want to really refine, you know, the gain structure of these things, this is the way to do it. If there's anything that you need to troubleshoot, like this multiband thing, like why does it sound funny? Now you know why. I think I've given you enough information there so that you can understand how to interpret this data. Honestly, go out and buy this plugin, it's incredible. It will teach you so much about what's going on underneath the hood of all these plugins. And when you get to a point where you're building chains, you've got to understand how everything interacts. And this will just show you straight away. And it's no longer guesswork, okay? If you enjoyed this, hit subscribe and remember to ring that notification bell. Give us a like if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and happy mixing.